Hello and welcome to this short video in which we step through how to restrict access to resources within Netbox. In this example scenario, we have multiple groups within a Netbox instance and they're using their own separate IP space, which should only be accessible to them and the overall Netbox administrator. To demonstrate how to do this, we'll make use of the tenancy feature combined with the object-based permissions framework, which was introduced in Netbox version 2.9. So first of all, I'm logging into my Netbox instance as admin, which gives me access to all resources within the Netbox instance. And in this case, I've got Netbox running locally on my laptop as a Docker container. Next, we create our overall tenant group, which will then contain the individual tenants. So we click on tenant groups and we'll add a new group called ABC Corp. We'll then add the first of our tenants, which we'll call ABC Tenant A, and then I'll create Tenant B by simply cloning Tenant A. Notice that when we created our tenants, Netbox also creates a slug for the tenant, and this is something that we can make use of to define the required permissions shortly. Next, we will switch to the Django admin interface, where we'll create some users and groups that we will then tie to the tenants. Starting with users, click on add, then enter our first user, Alice, set a password, and then do the same for our second user, Barry. Then we'll switch to groups, and we add our first group, which we'll call tenant group A, and then into which we will add user Alice. Then we do exactly the same again for our second tenant group B, and we make user Barry a member of it. Then once our users and groups are set up, we can switch back to the main Netbox UI by clicking on View Site. So next we want to create some IP prefixes that we can assign to our tenants. So under IPAM, it's prefixes and then add. First of all, we'll add a master prefix that is accessible to the administrator, and then that will be split into smaller prefixes. So we'll go with 192.168.0.0/16, and then we'll assign it to the overall ABC Corp tenant group. Then we'll add another 192.168.1.0/24 and assign it to tenant A. And then we'll also add 192.168.2.0/24 and assign this one to tenant B. So now we can see the overall slash 16 is in use by ABC Corp and then the two slash 24s are allocated to our tenants. Then I'm going to add a single IP address into each of the slash 24 subnets just for demo purposes so that we can see how our restrictions will apply. We'll add the first IP address in each subnet. Okay, so once we have that set up, we'll go back into the Django admin portal and then select add permission. We'll give it a descriptive name, and in this case, we'll give tenant A permission to view, add, and change IP addresses. So we select the object type of IPAM IP address, and then select the group ABC tenant A. Now the constraints section is where you can use JSON expressions to define a query set filter so that it only returns the permitted objects. So in this case, we will use the slug that was generated for tenant A, which I will paste in as valid JSON. Then we will define two other permissions for tenant A. Firstly, to view and change the prefix. So we can again use the same JSON for the query set filter to constrain the view to only the prefixes associated with the tenant. And lastly, we'll give tenant A view access to its own tenant object. And for this, we'll use a slightly different JSON query set, but we're still referencing the slug for tenant A to restrict what data is returned. Now, I've already gone ahead and created the same permissions for tenant B and constrained the data view to only return objects tied to their slug. There are a few other ways that you can use JSON to define the query set, and there are plenty of examples of these in the documentation. Okay, so with our permissions all set up, we can now log out as the admin and log in as the users to test that all is working as expected. So let's start with Alice. As you can see straight away, Alice can only see one tenant, one prefix, and one IP address, as we would expect. So if Alice clicks on tenant, she can only see ABC tenant A, and within that view, she can click on prefixes to see subnet 192.168.1.0. And within the prefix, she can see one IP address. Now let's just check that Alice can add an IP address in that space, and she'll add the next available IP address of .2. So let's also do the same logged in as Barry. 
And as expected, Barry can only see the tenant, prefix and IP address that he has permissions to. So as a final test of Barry's permissions, let's search for tenant A's prefix 192.168.1.0 and as expected, we get no results found. So lastly, you can read more about how object permissions are configured and you can find all of this and more in the Netbox documentation. I hope that's been a useful demo and thanks for watching.